I want to show you three things that makes this faith work. And then I want to show you three obstacles that you will collide with as you journey in the path of faith. But if you know how faith works, nothing truly is an obstacle. Every obstacle becomes a channel of glorification. Every obstacle is a channel for glorification. This faith we speak of, it gives. Every self-centered or selfish person is not a man of faith. Every time faith is at work, man becomes generous. Because in the foundation of the faith is trust in God, not trust in man. So even if it is the last he has, he's willing to give it. Because his giving is a proof that he believes that his sufficiency is not in himself. His sufficiency is in God. When you see people finding it difficult to give, it's because their philosophy is still self-oriented. The reason they can't give is because they think if they give, they won't have. But the man of faith knows if he doesn't give, there will be no room for more. So every time he wants to create more room, he gives. The philosophy of faith is at the foundation of giving. Without giving, faith is a joke. Abraham, the father of faith, God told him, Genesis 12, from verse 1 to 3, Come out of thy country, out of thy kindred, out of thy father's house, I will bless you, and I will increase you, and by you all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. But God didn't prove him by coming out. God proved him when he was able to give. Because the way faith is verified is when you can give, not when you can take. If you read Hebrews chapter 11, the Hall of Fame, 99% of the faith exploit was giving, not receiving. When a man gives, he can release his faith. That's why you study that scripture from Hebrews 11. All of them gave. Some gave money, some gave time, some gave even their own lives. The only person that was indicated for receiving was Sarah. And the child Sarah received was the child of promise. It wasn't even a personal thing. It was an epitome of the Jesus that was to come. How did God prove Abraham as a man of faith? He had told him all things, but he had to prove his faith. So in Genesis 22, from verse 1 to 14, he told him to go and give Isaac. And God didn't make it easy. He said, the same one that you love. I know you have servants in your house. I know you have Ishmael. But I'm talking about your best. He said, give your son Isaac, the one that you love. And Abraham didn't contemplate it. He didn't even discuss it with his wife. Because he's not, he's not built on reason. The guy sprang out in the morning very early. And in Genesis 22 verse 5, Abraham didn't call it giving. He called it worship. So when a man of faith is giving, he is worshiping the Lord. You see the people of the world who doesn't know how this system works. They stand up and tell you they want to take your money. If God wants to use you, it's an insult to think for a second that God needs your money to build his kingdom. We forgive the world for saying it because they don't know better. But it's unfortunate for a Christian to assume for a second that they are building the kingdom of God on account of his mom. What can you give to God? What do you have that you were not given? He said, what do you have that you were not given? It's a privilege for you to worship God with your substance. In Proverbs 3 now, they say, honor the Lord with your substance. So when we give, one is worship. Two is an act of honor. Three is the revelation that we know that we belong to God. So we are paying royalty to our king. We are not giving to help God. We are being helped by giving. So don't allow a man who knows nothing about the kingdom to educate you on Facebook. In this kingdom, we walk by a different set of rules. God will prove your heart by what you give. That's why I said where a man's heart is, that is where his substance is. So in the sight of God, your giving is a testimony that your heart is with him. So it's an act of worship. Genesis 22 verse 5. Nobody taught Abraham. How did he know? That's why they are called patriarchs. Patriarchs are 
pioneers of others in God. They traveled into God through intimacy and they better dimensions that didn't exist before. Who told Abraham that giving was an act of worship? Because he discovered it in God. The life of the patriarch is a testimony of discoveries in God. And this is one of the discoveries that Abraham made. He said, and Abraham said to the young man, Abide ye here with the ass. I and the lad will go yonder and worship once again. What is worship? He was going to give his best to the Lord. This is why he's a man of faith. And if you study verse 14, God came back and reenacted the covenant. God had promised him, I will make you a father of all nations. But he wasn't qualified for it until he proved it by his giving. I know God told you you'll be an ambassador. God told you you'll be a senator. God told you you'll be an apostle. Many times he will try you on the corridor of giving so that you qualify for that honor. Else, if he makes you an apostle, you will reap his church. That's why you see many people today, they are only reaping the, the body of Christ. Because they've not been proven on the corridor of giving. Everything is all about themselves. And they are so small. Because a man who only thinks self is small. It is a man who thinks kingdom that is truly big. This is why Abraham became the father of faith. God had to came back, come back and swear by himself. Because there was no bigger to, to swear by. So I, I promised you at first. Now I am saying it under God. Imagine where a man can take God to. He didn't only get God to promise him. He got God to swear. What does God owe this man? That the almighty God, the majesty on high, will now come back and put himself under an oath to prove to Abraham that he will do what he has said. Because people provoked it. You were blessed by the message you just listened to and wish to make Jesus your Lord and personal Savior. Kindly repeat this prayer after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I believe in your Son, Jesus Christ, and that He died for my sins and was raised from the dead for my justification. I therefore confess with my mouth that Jesus is the Lord of my life. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I am born again. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. If you just say this prayer, please send us an email on amodiscipleship at gmail.com or reach us on our website orocomichael.com to enable us to reach you and afford us the privilege to disciple you. God bless you.